What's going on Port fans, welcome back to another video on the channel and today, well, we're reviewing round one, Port Adelaide versus Brisbane, going down to the Lions by 11 points in what was a uh, interesting game of football to say the absolute minimum um, and again, unfortunately, down um, at the end of the game due to the Lions' superiority, I guess, in that last, in that last quarter of football. So let's get straight into it, let's review round one and see exactly what happened. This close, this close to pulling off a round one win. It was topsy-turvy game of football. It was really just all about um, who could have the cleaner possession, who could go inside 50 and kick a few goals. And as you could see, we um, we didn't prevail in that. We didn't have enough opportunities. We had, um, I think, equal amount of inside 50s, yet we only went at 40% going inside 50. And that's essentially what killed us in the end. Brisbane, you know, they had 25 shots to us, 19, and... Um, you know, we had a couple out in the falls as well, and there was there was a pivotal moment throughout the game, especially in that last quarter, that could have changed the course for us and really um, put us in good stead. But unfortunately, this was one of those, this was one of those games where you know we couldn't uh, find that edge to win, and there's so many variants that could have changed the result. Um, you know, injuries. Unfortunately, Trent McKenzie going down in that last quarter uh, left us a bit short down back, um, and then it's questioning our our tall defender stocks at the moment. Sam Skinner looks um, looks potent and ready to go, I think, um, to get an opportunity. But overall, the game itself, starting off in the first quarter, slow start for both teams, um, really was, wasn't anything particularly exciting. It was very ugly football, with very um, clumsy, poor decision-making, and um, it was kind of like a boxing match where people, uh, the, the, you know, two, the two boxers were going at it um, just jabbing, you know, there were there wasn't any set fire shots, there wasn't anything attacking, um, and then Brisbane kicked the first one, and we sort of had opportunities going inside 50, and it took a bit of boat br uh, brilliance from a stoppage um, inside our forward half to uh, actually get the first goal for us on the board, and the second quarter actually looked a bit better, we actually, you know, started to open the game up a bit more, we were going through the corridor, we were looking like we were spreading nicely, and our pressure was good, and um, if it wasn't for some Danaher stupidity at on half time, they would probably, Brisbane would have led at half time. But we got that we got that first punch, and to be within, you know, still leading at half time, I still thought, oh, there's an opportunity here now to um to have one of those quarters where we just go bang, see you later, um, and blow the other team away. And we've done that in the past, and we almost did that. We almost did that. I thought it was coming, and it did. We were up for 24 points in that third quarter. And then I don't know what happens with us, but it just seems to switch off. And it's almost like we're chasing. It baffles me that we're leading. We're in a comfortable position. We've got control of the game. You've got Scott Lysette 60 metres out with four minutes to go. Put it long and deep, mate. Yeah, we might not get a mark, and it's going to be the same thing we do all the time, but why change it? Why well, look for Trent McKenzie running past, who runs himself into trouble, and then next minute the Brisbane go down the other end and um, almost kick a goal and end up within 16 points at, uh, at three quarter time. You know they're they're working their way back. They kick a few points early on and then they go bang 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 and get, get in front and that's it. Um, and, and it's such a shame that we have to play like that. I think if we put the the foot to the floor even in that last four minutes, I'm happy for us to keep attacking and let Brisbane kick a couple of goals and, yeah, have the same margin at three-quarter time, but at least I know, right, we're still in this. We're still going strong. But then the mindset changed with four minutes to go, as I said, in that third quarter, and that's it. That's when I knew it, it set in. It was like, mm-hmm, yeah, we're not winning this. And it's it's a shame that you ride that last quarter. You're so enticed in what's happening, and you just still know at the end of the day we're not going to quite get that job done. And it didn't, 11 points which has been a much better result um, up at the Gabba in recent times. But to not win at the Gabba, I've said it last week, it was a mental challenge. To not win at the Gabba in a position, actually, we were to win it, is actually even more mentally damaging than <laughs> than anything else to get pumped. You know, if we got pumped, then, yeah, we know we've been here before, it's fine. But to go up there, be in a winning position, choke, and end up not bringing home the four points is probably a little bit more demoralizing. And the way I look at it, it's pretty deceiving 
but I think overall the the fact is that we're still not there. And I'm not going to blame injuries. I'm not going to be one to pinpoint exact problems because um, as an overall package, simply not quite there. Um, Finn, Finn Lason didn't show much. Marshall didn't show much. George Addis was there bits and pieces. Still dropping those easy marks, George. The, the decimation of Robbie Gray and Connor Rosie being injured pretty much all the whole game was um, was pretty distraught. Um, it, it probably hurt us a lot more. Had a massive impact because I don't think many small forwards kick goals. A lot of midfielders that kick goals. Dan Houston, which I'll get to in a second. Um, kicking a couple. Boak, Motlop, who was the sub for Dersma, who um, Mitch Robinson, by the way. Get stuff, mate. That's your... I can't... Uh, Off-field, you've got a personality. Great for football. On-field, you're just a dirty... I can't even say words. I don't want to... Just That's not football, mate. The way he goes about it. He's hard and tough. Yes... But he knows where the line is and he always cross, crosses it and he's just a thug. So um, to attack a ball like that where you go body first to a bloke that's bit, pretty much got the ball picking it up is the whole rule of um, of what's been brought in and completely disregarded for the head. Collarbone gone for Dersma, um, which is such a shame. Um, but I think, yeah, with him gone, you can't get any continuity into his game, which is such a shame. But Dersma gone. Rosie on one leg, Gray on one leg, Alir looked like he was on one leg. Um, and then, you know, you have Trent McKenzie go down, decimation. Um, it was kind of laughable in the end. Let's. I'll touch on Dan Houston. I think he deserves a massive segment because he has just been building for this moment. 36 touches, two goals. Great move for the footy. I loved watching him last night. Um, and I, I picked this. I think he was going to have a massive year, and he just looks at home in that midfield spot. He just moves the ground so well. He's so fit. Him and Boak and Wines. Butters had a pretty good game. I thought he was a bit clumsy, and uh, his efficiency was a bit poor, but to have that type of group now, and Amon was still good, and the players we come to expect were good, um, but yeah, that's it's it's Dan Houston. Like he's, We always have a player that stands up. Last year was Amon. Um, and, and Drew as well, he was very good in that last quarter, besides the fact that he should have just kicked the goal running inside 50. I hate that unselfish play we have. Um, be a bit selfish, take the game on and kick the goal, mate. Um, but yeah, Houston, I'll finish on Houston. Houston's been unreal, had a great preseason. To see him perform like that has a massive positivity for us throughout the year. And when we build to our best... I still think we're going to be the same, the top four side, fighting for a premiership, all of that. But Dan Houston is a key part now of us progressing into that next level. Delivery inside 50 is crucial. You get Charlie Dixon back and Dan Houston's delivering to you, there's your problem sort of solved. Poor fans, I'll finish on this. I know we, um, we're feeling it. I'm, I'm kind of conflicted. Last night I was very emotional and um, I, I was angry. Uh, and I shouldn't get angry at round one because I know the reasons for it. Decimation of injuries. You know, it was it was a shit game all round pretty much for both teams. Um, not too much to take away from it, but the effort was there, the fight was there. We just ran out of gas, um, which is a shame. The positives, as, as I mentioned, Houston. I thought, um, you know, you, we, just the whole as a whole, the group fought, but Houston was carrying us on his back. Um, a lot to work with, but a lot to a lot of work to do. And there's going to be conflicting responses to this all, as Port fans should. Um, everyone will have their own opinion too. This is the massive thing. Everyone will have their own opinion of how their team's going. This is why I do the channel. I have an opinion and we can discuss it in the comments. So let me know in the comments below what you're thinking after round one. There's still 21 to go, plenty of time. But um, yeah, not a good start. Thanks for watching this review of round one, Port vs Brisbane. Let me know in the comments below what you're thinking. Going into round two against the Hawks next Saturday night. Big game uh, for the club in general, celebrating Russell Ebert uh, in the first home game of 2022. A full crowd capacity as well. So I can't wait to see you all there. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new for plenty more Port Adelaide and AFL content throughout 2022. My name's Anthony, and as always, can't pay. Thank mm -hmm. you.